My topic, I'll be exploring the various treatment approaches for recovery of myope um, addicts in South Africa. By the way, I'm Aaron Siza, an occupational therapist in South Africa. I'm working at the Horizontal Hospital and I'm also operating at Rene Medical Legal and Functional Capacity Evaluations Company, where I'm helping people with mental health and other conditions. Um, so, Nyaope is a drug that consists of marijuana, heroin, cannabis, and ARVs, and other substances uh, within it. So, um, youth, most of the youth are taking it to track themselves, when to distract themselves from the problems that they have. It is a worldwide social burden that is negative in increasing the, the, the health of the addicts, the health of, of, of the families and the society at large. And in South Africa, about uh, in the literature, according to literature, 15% of the youth in South Africa, they're actually consuming yaube. So in literature, they're saying in West Asia, about 0.9% of youth are consuming heroin. And uh, uh, according to this Nyope thing, uh, the, the, the heroin is one of the things that they actually, they, uh, they, they combine with other substances to, 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 to create Nyope. So the, the use of Nyope is prevalent within the youth uh, from the age of 24 to 29 years, or the, yeah, 24 to 29 years. And those who are at secondary schools, they end up. They, they actually end up dropping out of school and getting to be unemployed and rooming on the streets, homeless. So over six years of working in the hospital, I've observed that many, uh, most of the youth in Provincial Town in other parts of South Africa are new addicts. They are rooming around the streets, and when they come to the hospital, it's when they they come for medical, the other medical problems. As soon as they're treated, as, 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 as soon as the medical problems are treated, they, they get discharged, they go back to the street. That is the problem. So the Nyaube uh, problem, the, the Nyaube addiction is not actually solved because of, um, I've observed that uh, the, 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 the medical team, they don't have uh, knowledge or experience in dealing with Nyaube. And also they don't have the specific treatment protocols and also the poor infrastructure because when you treat them, they need to be actually excluded. They have to be in their own place where you are admitting them for a long time with uh, uh, good resources. So the problem here is, according to literature, when I was uh, perusing, they're saying there's limited effective treatment for neobi addicts in the public sector. So the literature says again, although the treatment is available, the addicts, they drop out because of uh, the, uh, the, 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 the withdrawal symptoms, the severe abdominal cramps, the diarrhea, and also the flu like symptoms that take some few days to disappear. So they end up dropping out of treatment. And again, the literature says uh, the treatment for this withdrawal symptoms it's very costly, so it's very expensive. And as a result of this exp expensive treatment that can be accessible, it results in relapses. These people end up, they end up relapsing from the treatment that they get because it doesn't actually, the treatment that they get, it doesn't actually focus on, on treating the withdrawal symptoms because of the one that is available, it's very expensive. So they end up getting, they, get, they end up relapsing. And when they relapse, uh, we, we, we get the poor economic growth because a lot of, of you, they are on the street. And uh, it results again in the, bio, the, the, the in bio, biopsychosocial well-being of these addicted individuals. And according to literature again, the early intervention for prevention services remains a challenge in the African countries. And in conclusion, there is a shortage of research in aftercare services and preparation services for addicts. As much as um, other hospitals are trying with the available treatment that is there, uh, the aftercare on discharge, 
the aftercare problems and the uh, aftercare um the aftercare and the integration services for them to actually be integrated back to the society, then it's a problem. It's not addressed. That's why they, 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 there's a circle of them coming back, uh, relapsing, and going back to the street. So in the research, um, I'm actually proposing a research to be done on this. Um, the questions that should be uh, posed on the research. I want to understand which treatment is effective for new addicts. And I want to understand the factors that are leading to, to the treatment to be limited, this, this effective treatment, why is it limited? And what are the causes in delay of this recovery for this addicts? That will be the other question. And the aim of the study should be actually to, to explore the available effective treatment for recovery of these neuropathy addicts. The research, the, the research objectives should be uh, to identify the available, we, we want to identify the available effective treatment for neuropathy that is available now. We want to determine the factors leading to limited effective treatment of this neuropathy What is it that is leading to this uh, treatment to be limited? And to identify the challenges that neuropathy encounter in receiving treatment, to identify the causes of delay in recovery of this neuropathy Matlangu and Giza did a study, and then they state that uh, they, they, the unbalanced biological, spiritual, and social life may, may result in, in, in your addiction. And of course, it's true. It may be true because the moment your life gets, when, the, when your life gets to be unbalanced as a, as, a, as, a, as a young person, then you start to be distracted. And they, 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 add, up, they add on that to say the admission in the rehab centers could be actually the first step in the treatment of this uh, uh, neob addicts. And then the literature says the locus of control in the biopsychosocial model may the biopsychosocial model may contribute effectively to holistic multidisciplinary treatment for neob. When they talk about the locus of control, they talk about the, 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 the center of as an individual, it has the, the internal and the external locus of control. The, the internal locus of control is when the, 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 the addict says, I want to quit Nyaope, I need help. And then when it's external is when the, the, the addict says, uh, I believe that my spiritual leaders or the Sangomas or my parents or anyone with powers can help me to quit Nyaope. And also the, 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 the psychosocial model, biopsychosocial model is the multidisciplinary treatment when the, all professionals that are involved, the medical the doctor, occupational therapist, social workers and psychologists, they come with their treatment to help this person in terms of counseling, psychotherapy, they, all of those they're falling under the biopsychosocial model. model. So the, the literature says the locus of control in the biopsychosocial model may contribute effectively to holistic multidisciplinary team treatment for these people. In addition to that, Early childhood programs and the parental support home visits could also be effective for this in you know, the addicts. They add the, 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 the home visits, the parental support, and also the, 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 the early childhood programs that could be done in the schools that they could be actually they could actually contribute effective in the in the prevention and also in the treatment of these you neobe know, addicts. And in 2019, those uh, did a study. He identified three phases that could be actually um, uh, followed when treating these people. He identified detoxification, recovery, and relapse prevention as phases of treatment that could be effective. In terms of this detoxification is when you give the person medication, that cost medica med medication that they're talking about to actually treat the, 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 the symptoms. And the recovery will be where the biopsychosocial metal comes, where the all the multidisciplinary team come with their treatment to help this person. Relapse prevention is when you discharge this person and you plan on home visits, you plan with the home based carers to go and look after this person even after discharge. So moreover, the Sanka, okay, Fermion just studied in 2020 and he said that the Nyaube medication cannot stop the, crab, the, 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 the drug, the, the, the Nyaube cravings, but it can help with the cramps and the withdrawals. It means that cost medication that I'm talking about, it actually addresses the withdrawal symptoms, but not the craving. 
the, the, the cravings of this Nyaube. And then Nyau, and, and Do comes back and say, the South Africa, the South, South Africa has not developed a proper treatment for the substance abuse, for actually substance abuse in average in treating Nyaube. And in conclusion, there's insufficient literature for, inter, for, for intervention of Nyaube addicts. So here you see, these are the South African, there's only uh, four universities that I had studies about the, 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 the Nyaube, which is the Pagomahatra Health Science University, the University of Stellenbosch, the University of Pretoria, and the University of Cape Town. So in 2016, the study was done on the locus of control to say uh, the, the, there was a study that was done about people like getting the addicts to be divided into internal and external, having to hear how the patient feels. Those who are saying, I want to quit Nyaope, and those who were saying, um, I believe that the spiritual leaders are going to help me to actually uh, heal. So on the study, majority of the people who recovered from this as the, the, the ones with the internal uh, locus of control. So in 2018, the biopsychosocial metal as well was, uh, the study was done on the biopsychosocial metal on, um, as, an, as, 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 an, as a treatment for this uh, you know, intervention to say when the multidisciplinary come, when the multidisciplinary team come to address uh, the issues in terms of counseling, psychotherapy, and support groups and all of that, it also it is it can be effective in terms of the treatment of the substance. And then in 2019, that's when now the study about detoxification, recovery, and relapse prevention was done to say when you treat these people, it should be actually be divided into, into phases. There should be a phase of this detoxification, and it should be uh, moving to the phase of recovery and moving to the phase of relapse prevention. And then in 2020, the other study was done and it confirmed that the home visits and parental support, they actually effective in terms of aftercare services, especially when you plan to discharge the patient to be at home. Yes, it was also identified as one of the effective treatment that could help. So in my idea, I had I have Renee's new intervention programs that still needs to be. I'm actually proposing this idea to be explored in a feasible study. This program, it, it is a nine, 19 month program in the rehab center. So what happens is um, the clients, okay, the, the, the new addicts will the, the, those who will participate in the study. Will have to be in a will have to be admitted in a rehab center for 19 months. So it operates under three uh, phases. So the, the treatment will be done under three phases: the detoxification, and then the recovery and the, the relapse prevention. The model consists of uh, I mean the, the treatment, the intervention program. It consists of the locus control, lo, locus of control, by by a psychosocial model aftercare and integration services, which includes homes, home, home visits and parental support for this for the, for the treatment of this new area. And the aim is to actually to, to, to address the drug-related psychiatric, social, and medical problems in order to achieve successful recovery for these people to actually be functional. So the RNA intervention, the, the RNA new intervention program that is proposed well, from for the first month to the third month, actually the first three months will be admission. In the first three months of admission, the researcher should actually, it will be a detoxification phase where the medication is actually uh, uh, administered to the people. So because now the medication is expensive, it means during that research, the, that, that, that cost medication should actually be found and be administered to these people. And because we are aware that this medication, yes, of course, it, it is going to address the withdrawal symptoms, but the person will still be craving the drug. He will be needing counseling. So the counseling will have to be there. The support groups will have to be there as well in the first three months to support this person emotionally as he's withdrawing, as, as he will be in a stage of withdrawal and the first initial phase of withdrawal. So 
from the fourth month to the twelfth month, that will be a recovery phase. So the medication won't stop. The person, the person will, con will continue to take the medication. And then now here, the researcher will have to divide these people according into two, two groups. Those who have internal uh, locus of control to be assigned and those who have external, internal, I mean, external locus of control assigned. Why I'm saying that? Uh, I'm saying that because for those who are having the internal locus of control, then the treatment approach is going to be different to the ones that are having the external locus of control. So it is also, this locus of control is going to guide the biopsychosocial model that will be applied. All the multidisciplinary team will be guided by what the patient is saying about this, uh, uh, the, 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 the recovery, his recovery. If the person is having internal locus of control, the treatment of multidisciplinary team will be holistic and will be different and also, when the person is having the external locus of control, a treatment of the multidisciplinary team in terms of counseling, uh, support groups, and all of this, the, 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 the psychosocial groups and all of that, it'll also be different. And it may be effective because it will be guided by the, 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 the clients, the state of the client. So from the 13th month to the 18th month, that is now when we are moving to the relapse prevention phase. There we are doing the support groups. I'm also proposing the support groups. Uh, as much as you now you've done the treatment, now you have two groups. And when you move to this uh, phase, I, I propose that you, 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 you still move with the, the two groups of people. The, the people, that the client, that the addicts with the internal locus of control to be on their support group in one group and those with external locus of control to be on the other group so that you can have um, a progress within the support groups when, when, when you facilitate the groups, the group therapy. And then in this phase, again, uh, you'll be doing the home visits. The purpose of this of the home visits is actually to empower the, the caregivers and the parents actually, you, you actually treat them as well. You, you get them ready because the next stage is discharge. Now you're getting them ready for, for this person. You, you, you emotionally support them and you, you, you educate them about this substance and on how they should actually handle the person when he's at home. And then you do the school, the, the, the school visits as well. You look at the school that is actually affected by this neobe. If you want to integrate these people back to the school, then you need to go to you need to do, go to the school and prepare the teachers for the integration to be successful. And the parental support, I think I I, I, I actually spoke about it and the home visits. So on the 19th month, that is when now you do the discharge. Now here we are focusing on relapse prevention again. So the here is it will be the aftercare intervention services. Actually, here it will be more of um, home visit again, more of home visit. The person will be at home now. You just touch the person, the person is going at home. So you get to have the, you need to have the home-based carers who are going to do home visits daily to monitor if the person is still taking the medication. And if the person is still, um, if you, 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 you initiated the return to school, you need to make sure that all of these things are moving as you did them. And then also the, the multidisciplinary team can also uh, do that as well on a, daily, on a daily basis to go in home visits to check the clients on how they're doing. So that is the Rene in Nyaupe intervention program that I'm proposing uh, to be done in a feasible study. And I'm hoping it can maybe uh, produce some effective, uh, it can be, so it can, maybe it can be an effective treatment can come up to be a very effective treatment for these people. So for the people who are going to do the study that I'm proposing, it should actually be a qualitative study. Why I'm saying that because here, you'll be more exploring the treatment approaches, the available treatment, the, the effective treatments that we need for, 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 for Nyobe intervention, for Nyobe addicts actually, for, for their recovery. So, so you'll be using the thick descriptive approach where you're going to actually interact with the participants 
face-to-face uh, -face and in-depth, and you're going to use, you, you'll be guided by the same structured interview where you facilitate the, 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 the participants to actually open up and to describe their feelings. The population and the sample of the study will be the Nyobe addicts that are, that are admitted in a rehab center at that time, and also the multidisciplinary team that will be administering uh, the treatment, the, 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 the Renee's um, Nyobe intervention program. So in terms of data analysis, you can use, the researcher may use the Brown and Clegg's six steps of analysis to analyze the data that will be collected on the, on, on the, on, during the period of that 19 month. So you'll have to become uh, familiar with the data that you collected. You have to generate the codes according to the data, then you search for themes. As, as soon as you find the themes, then you review them, you define them accordingly, then you write up. Significance of the study, it is going to raise awareness. The findings of this study will raise awareness on the available treatment of neuroviolence. We want to know that medication, and we want that medication to be available for these people because now the most of our youth, they're actually on the street. So as soon as, if the study could be done, it's going to help a lot of people. People are going to be aware that there's actually medication that is helping and there's actually a treatment program that could be followed and that could be very effective. People can be back uh, to normal and be functional. And it will also raise awareness to the multidisciplinary team because uh, according to literature, we are lacking um, uh, proper treatment protocols with phenyl uh, addiction. So as soon as it can be explored, then the MDT will also have a, a, a better approach to this problem when they treat when they're dealing with neobi addicts. The body of knowledge, the study could actually contribute to the body of knowledge. The researcher will publish the findings in the journals, present them in the academic conferences, and also to make them available in the libraries for scholarly references. And the study could actually, the, the findings could actually empower, empower people. So it, it will empower the neobi addicts that seek treatment. There are those neobi addicts who are seeking treatment, but they don't know where to go. So if they find out about the, the, the treatment being available, it is actually to empower them to, to seek help to come and for to come for treatment in the, in, in the rehab centers. And then it may further empower the MDT to actively apply the available intervention on your addicts to actually um, start applying the treatment uh, and following the treatment program, the proposed treatment program that I'm, I'm talking about to actually help the Nyobi people. So in terms of recommendations, I'm recommending Renee's Nyobi intervention program to be, to, to be researched in a feasible study. And thank you so much for your time.